Thank you very much, Minister, for your comprehensive uh, answering here this afternoon. Just in relation to the Nigerian uh, legislation that you're bringing before the House, this, I think it could be this week, or was it today? I'm not too sure whether it's gone through or not. Um, if, if, the, you know, As relates to the yeah, but discussion. Just if, if we were members of the pact today. Okay, sure. If, if we were members of that pact today. We would have to run this through the EU Solidarity Coordinator before we could do anything on it. So there is, a, there is a restriction on our foreign policy when it comes to that. So we would have to run that through this EU Solidarity Coordinator. Is that a fact or not? No, it's not. So it's, right. it's not, but just to explain what today is. So today, no, I'm just saying. If, if no, I'm just saying. If we were members of this pact at this moment in time, no, it, it doesn't impact it. So what I brought to cabinet today was a memo for information. I'm for well aware of what you brought to, to cabinet well, today. No, I, I, yeah, I'm sorry, I, I'm yeah, not. Has, for the transcript, yeah, it would sorry, be helpful just, to actually get the yeah. full. So that's the minister yeah. answer. But just, I, I don't think you are, because you said it was legislation around Nigeria. So what I've brought today is a memo for information to outline that we are designating the country where we have most applications coming from into the accelerated procedure. We're not designated it's as safe. We're saying that it is the country with most applications that will be reviewed on a quarterly basis and it would be looked at the previous three months. That won't be impacted by the pact. We can still make those decisions. That's just about quicker processing and applying. If we were part of that way. pact today, would you have that decision or would that decision be in the hands of the EU Solidarity Coordinator? No, that is would, the question. We, we would make that decision ourselves. That doesn't impact I, I believe. I believe you do, we don't. And but there's, I, I, I'm, and there's I'm, 77 I'm, people I'm per day at this moment in time seeking asylum in this country. We are going to hit 23,000 this year. The Rwanda bill yesterday. I want to know what measures are going to be put in place to stop what's happening in Northern Ireland. People are coming in through Belfast at this moment in time, coming down into the Republic, and what is happening to stop that flow? And there's nothing happening. We are, nothing is happening, Minister. There's, the Department of, of Justice is not working. The Department of Immigration is not working. And that is why we have the chaos we have on our streets today in relation to all those people out there in tents. So, we're just not, and I don't believe it's going to get any better. This pack is not going to provide the panacea for immigration uh, measures in this country. I don't believe it is, and I think we're aware of our depth, and we need to get we need to get a hold of this ourselves. And okay, if, if you're sorry. going to rely on the EU migration pact to do this for us, I think it's chaos. It's just absolutely chaos, and it's just going to be more chaos. So, thanks, Andrew, Can for I respond those briefly? Views? Just say, I think it's really important yeah. that we talk I was about. Like facts. Minister to do that. Yeah, just, yes, yeah. Sorry, I'm just take the time and just let's manage the proceedings correctly. So thank you, Senator, for those views. I'm now going to ask the Minister to make a final response Sorry. and um, then we'll uh, conclude the, uh, today's discussion. Minister, over to you. I, I just think it's really important that we deal with facts. So when the Senator asked the question whether or not this would be impacted by us joining the pact, it is absolutely the case that it wouldn't be impacted. So people can choose to believe that or not, but I have to state the facts here and the facts are very clear that that would not be the case in the same way that the facts are clear that the five million people you referred to earlier were people coming to this country to work, to live, to study, to uh, or across the EU and also seek international protection, but that figure is not in any way representative of the numbers that would have to be reallocated, so we have to deal with facts here. Um, the UK left the EU and decided not to join into much of what we're discussing now. Not only have their international protection figures increased, but they are now looking to have similar agreements with EU member states replicating what we are now doing within the EU. So the idea that we go it alone, the idea that a country of our size can deal with one of the biggest challenges, I think, of our time on our own without the support, without joining forces essentially with our European colleagues, um, it is quite fanciful. Um, and it is already shown with our colleagues across the water to not work. So the reason that we are proposing and I am proposing to opt in uh, is that we are committed members of the European Union. We are already members of the European asylum system. What we're proposing is to update that system to make sure that it works in the most effective way possible. And above all, that we have a migration and asylum system that is firm but fair. It's fair to those who genuinely need our protection that they get it as quickly as possible, and all of these measures ensure that, but that it's firm as well to those who genuinely don't need our help. And again, these measures ensure that that can be applied. So I thank colleagues for their support and their engagement and their questions this afternoon. Thank you.